God bless you, brothers and sisters, and welcome to Godspeed Magazine Live. The question that we're asking this week is, Hollywood, can you save it? Or is there no hope? With that breaking news, after holding police at bay for hours, Chris Brown finally comes out of his Tarzana mansion. One of the accusers claimed Singer fondled him on a movie set when he was just 13. Another claimed he was 17 when Singer had sex with him at a party at his house that same year, while the third man alleged Singer had sex with him when he was just 15. Before he became Tim the Toolman Taylor or Santa Claus, Tim Allen served a 28-month sentence for trafficking cocaine, and it could have been a whole lot worse. Christina Cohen was first to make a claim against the actor. The actress claimed that he had raped her three years prior. Westwick denied the allegations in an Instagram post he later deleted. I do not know this woman, he wrote. I have never forced myself in any manner on any woman. I certainly have never committed rape. Welcome back. This week's featured article from the Harvest issue of Godspeed magazine is entitled Transforming Hollywood, Movie Guide's Effect on Tinseltown. This article was written by the Pulitzer Prize nominated Troy Anderson, and it talks about Dr. Ted Bear, the founder of Movie Guide. Now here's the question. How in the world can anyone move Hollywood's content toward Christian values? How is it possible to get studio executives actors and everyone on board with including more family-friendly material. If you think that's an easy task, try it sometime and see what happens. What we're all familiar with is the massive drug scandals that happen all the time in Hollywood. We're massive with the sex scandals and celebrities being arrested for doing things with prostitutes in cars. We've seen the horrendous nightmares of college manipulations. We'll just go gently there. We've seen the nightmare. So how are we gonna make this kind of influence when we're going into this article, when Troy was writing this, we're gonna see where Dr. Bear started, where God called him and his team back in 1985 to get started with all this. We're gonna also find out, imagine the possibility of an awards gala that isn't filled with self-worship. Imagine an Oscars, Academy Awards, et cetera, that doesn't have mostly naked people under a little bit of glitter and mesh that doesn't have people that are completely about worshiping themselves. But imagine a bunch of people coming together for movie awards about worshiping Jesus. What is this award show called? It's called the Movie Guide Faith and Values Awards Gala. So they just went on their 27th in this particular picture. Kevin Sorbo's there. This award show, imagine if God was present in an award show, what would happen in the audience? Those things are happening at these award shows, and they're happening every year with major celebrities. There's an entire move of God just in the awards alone, but there's kind of a question that pulls itself out, which is, who is this Dr. Ted Bear guy, and how did he create this amazing team of people who are willing to completely devote their lives to influencing the content of Hollywood? Where did he come from? Who are his parents? It's interesting to find out who his parents are and that they came from the movie industry. It's amazing to find out that Ted was involved with incredibly successful projects before he came into Movie Guide, and that gave him the edge. It gave him the ability to get in initially with these executives. And again, at the end of it all, the key thing is finding out how is he influencing these executives and actors now? What are those pieces? He even wrote a book, How to Succeed in Hollywood, which you'll see right here. And because we're a digital magazine, you'll just click on the book and it will immediately bring you, if you wanna go and buy a copy of the book and read about how to succeed in Hollywood, it's there. You don't have to do anything else. It'll bring you right back. For those of you like me who are parents and you're concerned about what your kids are watching or whether you yourself wanna go and be exposed to the filth of non-Christian content, you're gonna be able to get a sense to just click on the magazine here. You'll get to watch an ep, you know, them talking about which films you should watch or not watch, what's in the films. And they really don't go out of their way to tell you highly negative things. They just make it really clear what's in the film so that you can choose on your own what's worth it, what's not. But this is the beauty of the digital magazine format. 
It brings everything together. You have links to go to books. You have videos to go to the content. You have pictures that help you understand who these people are. You can go back into all sorts of information right from this article in Godspeed Magazine. Just in case all of this isn't enough for you though, when we return in just a minute, we're going to bring you Dr. Ted Bear in person as I interview him here live in Godspeed Magazine Live. So stay tuned, don't move, and we'll be right back. Every time I tell someone I'm a cat person, I'm like, what does that mean? You don't like dogs? No, that's not what that means. It just means I like other people's dogs. I don't like that kind of energy in my house. You know what I mean? That annoying dog, best friend, in your face all the time energy. Just like, yeah! I love you! <laughs> You're home. Where have you been? <laughs> that second kid came out with a worst list. He's like, look, Dad, I need a smartphone and an iPad. I'm like, well, I'm Santa Claus. I didn't want to tell you. I was hoping that your friends would tell you, but you had backed me into a financial corner with your $3,000 Christmas list. I would tell people that we were engaged, and everyone's advice to me was the same. Pick your battles, buddy. That's not fair. What do we say to women? Oh, you're getting married, huh? You're going to win <laughs> a lot. <laughs> You grew up in a Latino home, you cannot talk back to your mother. I remember I thought I was old enough to talk back to my mom. She whooped me and grounded me for two weeks. Had to call my wife, let her know I couldn't come home. <laughs> Baby mom is tripping. My name is Bishop T.D. Jakes, and I stand with Van Jones, Lewis L. Reed, Hashtag Cut 50, and national organizers of this National Day of Empathy. In order to reform our criminal justice system, we must first humanize and empathize with those who are impacted by it. This includes crime survivors and those who have committed crimes. We post this announcement using the hashtag Day of Empathy or go to dayofempathy.org to see how you can get involved. Can a nation be saved in a day? A country changed in a moment? The ancient prophet Isaiah asked this bold question nearly 3,000 years ago. And now, this audacious question has been answered. All of these events in this historic week-long campaign culminated into one groundbreaking moment that changed the entire nation. And the following morning, the front page of all four Honduran national newspapers read, We have a new Honduras. In the new Honduras, we love ourselves, so we discover and complete our purpose. In the new Honduras, we love our children, so we give them education. We love our family, so we pass on our values. In the new Honduras, we love our nation, so we believe in its prosperous future. And Father in heaven, y Padre en el cielo, we invite your kingdom to come to the nation of Honduras. Invitamos tu reino venga a la nación de Honduras. Can a nation be saved in a day? Yes, it can. One nation, one day. privilege of introducing Dr. Ted Bear. Thank you so much for being with us. We deeply appreciate having you here on Godspeed Magazine Live. Oh, it's great to be with you, even though we're doing it through Google and, <laughs> you know, and technology can always improve. Many years ago, I was a research engineer for NASA in 64, and we got a rocket to the moon. So we can always improve technology. Wow. I have a hundred questions there, but I'll save them for a different date. There's a particular individual, Les Romas, that we both know I would bet anything, and we'll have to talk about that at a separate time. But Dr. Bear, would you do us the honor of praying for us over the show, over today's show? Lord, we just ask you to bless the show, not for our sake, but for the sake of the people who are watching it, the people who are tuned in, the people who hear it. Let them hear clearly. Let them see clearly. Let them see your spirit, your face, your truth being revealed to them in a mighty and powerful way. 
let them understand that the good news is that anybody, anywhere, at any time can be delivered, redeemed, renewed, revived, and that you will, uh, you know, conduct their steps and help them to achieve the desires that you have laid on their heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, Dr. Bear, I am eagerly awaiting. We focus on God in action specifically. And so my first question is, how did God bring you into this vision in 1985 to create Movie Guide? Well, I grew up in the movie industry. My parents were movie stars. My father starred in about 62 movies. My mother was a star. Um, I was born in 46 when he was starring in Showboat uh, on Broadway. And he played the gambler, which was the lead role. Uh, many years later, they made a, a dramatic version. He was in the musical version with Mel Gibson playing the gambler. But he did a lot of plays. He did plays from 46 to 86. But my mother died when I was young, and I grew up without faith and values. Uh, so when she died, I just went off the deep end uh, in many different ways. I'm not going to go into detail. I just uh, lost it, did a lot of um, – lived with four women, did a lot of drugs, et cetera. One of my friend's father's own Dave GM, and he blew his brains out. Another one lost his brains. Wow. So about uh, 1974, uh, because my father was really handsome, unlike me, and but like my children and grandchildren, he uh, four women who had come to Christ through Billy Graham took an interest in him. They kept taking him to Christian events, and uh, he'd take me to protect them from these women. And I'd walk out and saying, these people, these Christians are crazy. Then I became one and found out they were crazy. But anyway, after uh, a couple of those, one woman said, you've been to Dartmouth, graduated some of the you went to Cambridge. You know, yeah. Now, I went to all those schools, University of Bordeaux and Toulouse, University of Munich, because I was looking for love in all the wrong places. But she uh, said, why don't you read the Bible and tell me what's wrong with it? And six months, I protested. Finally, I said, okay, I'll read it. And I started reading Matthew. God brought me to Christ. I immediately went to a cemetery in New York, a seminary in New York, uh, which was a cemetery. But anyway, for a mainline denomination, they had the rights. Uh, I know David Aikman. He, he knew me back about when. And uh, they had the rights to the Chronicles and Arnias. They didn't know what to do. They'd been given them in 54 by C.S. Lewis, 1954, as Lewis didn't understand the value. They'd been trying to make it. We got it on CBS. We won an Emmy Award. We had 37 million viewers. It was incredible. And I looked at all that. And I said, you know, I don't need the awards. I grew up with a father, but I had to stand in line waiting for him to get an award. And he won the box office award and all this stuff. I said, what I'd like to do is change the industry. God put it on my heart. So when we started, there was only one movie with positive Christian content and, uh, I'm not talking about TV. I'm talk not talking about news. TV has got a lot of uh, rough areas, mainly because of the advertisers or the negative napops in the TV world. Uh, but in terms of movie, we've gone from one movie with positive Christian content to about um, you know, 67% last year, which was absolutely incredible. Uh, and the, the biggest movies this year are absolutely incredible. The first one, Let's say How to Train Your Dragon is about uh, the hero being told he's got a man up so he can marry uh, the heroine, Astrid. She's told that she has to be a woman. The next one, Lego Movie, is the same thing. The next one, Toy Story, uh, Woody has to uh, leave his toy friends behind so he can marry Bo Peep. Bo Peep, when she sees him put on a dress, she's been broken. She's been cast out. So one movie after another is expressing sentiments. And most of these people have been to Arcala. Most of them know us. And so we see more Christian content. We more, see more family content in the movie industry. And I can explain how that differs from television and everything else, but it would take us too long, so I won't bother with that. But we've seen a lot of miracles, just the miracle of going from one movie with positive Christian content to 67% is absolutely incredible. And everybody told me in the beginning it couldn't be done, so it's been done. That is so beautiful and so amazing, I think the perception of probably most of the country that 67% of content is focusing towards biblical values in Hollywood, they would immediately go, what? But then when you actually read and listen to what you're talking about, even just, I was reading earlier something you had said about, um, oh, which movie well, was it? Let me, let me il illustrate that to you in a better way. Um, Hollywood tries to make movies for different pockets. When we started out, 
if you saw a movie with a Christian in it, like a priest in Poltergeist, he had a gun, knife in his hand and he was about to knock on the doorbell so he could stab people. Uh, today, you even get movies that are very sketchy content where at least there's a good minister, there's a good prayer, there's a reference to Jesus. Uh, now, why did they do that? Because we've shown them that it's a big audience. Every week, about 125 million people go to church and about 25 million people go to movies. So they want to make movies for the Hispanic audience. Uh, my wife doesn't like being called Hispanic, but she's sixth generation Argentine. And so uh, they make movies for the Hispanic audience. They make movies for the Chinese audience. They make movies for the African-American audience, Tyler Perry. Uh, so we've just said this is a gigantic audience. It's five times the number of people going to, uh, to um, the movie theater every week. So you need to get some of these people. And as they've been putting more Christian content, they're getting more people and their box office is going up. I mean, I mentioned all these movies this year that have positive values. And uh, most of them are over a billion dollars at the box office, which was unheard of. When we started, there were only six uh, mediocre movies aimed at families. And now there's just one family movie after another every week. And that is such a key point. I want to make sure that this goes out. For any of you watching, a key point here is what was the strategy that moved the artists and the studios to do more biblical value content? Welcome, blessed soul, to Movie Heaven, where we have but one glorious streaming service, VidAngel. VidAngel gives you and the little cherubs freedom to filter out any mature content you don't want to see. <laughs> VidAngel is an app that connects to your streaming accounts like Netflix, Amazon, and HBO and lets you filter the content you're already paying for. Meaning you can watch Wolf of Wall Street without language, Game of Thrones without nudity, or Transformers 4 without all of it because it's a terrible movie. The point is VidAngel is totally customizable, so you get to decide exactly what you don't want to see and hear. So download VidAngel today. VidAngel. Watch however the bleep you want. What if we pick one day and tried to have one of the biggest national days of action on criminal justice in the history of the country? Crime hurts. Justice should heal. That was the focus of today's National Day of Empathy event at the Capitol. Hey, Governor Malloy is calling for reform for women in the justice system. So the Day of Empathy shines a light on people impacted by the criminal justice system to uplift their voices and to win over hearts and minds towards the idea that transformation is possible. Some people never seize their moment, paralyzed by their own thinking, by the barriers that hold them back. But can you hear Jesus calling? It's time to answer him with action. Your destiny, future, and family are not controlled by what you don't have because they rest in the hands of the one who loves you, saves you, redeems, and heals. It's time to rise in the authority and power of Jesus, to stand in faith, because you are next. Sight and Sound Theaters presents a special event coming to movie theaters. This man has lived in darkness, but today he will see the light. This Easter, experience the greatest rescue story of all time as it comes to life on the big screen. In this original stage production, filmed in front of a live audience. I have changed. And that is who Jesus says I am. One man did all this. He is alive in us, and he can live in you, too. Jesus, in movie theaters for three days only. For a location near you, visit JesusEvent.com. This goes out 
For any of you watching, a key point here is what was the strategy that moved the artists and the studios to do more biblical value content? And the specific thing was he translated from, let's say, Christianese, our language, over to the false god of cash, right? Cash is king. And we need in the Christian body to understand that if the secular world does not speak our language, they're not interested in all the things we care about, but they are interested when we affect them at the bank account. And so therefore, things like voting with your wallet, and I mean what you choose, what you buy, where you go to shop, has everything to do with what you experience coming at you in the market. And so I want to make sure that you consider how genius what he's done is and how important that move is. Look at the results from one movie to 67%. And, 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 and again, like he pointed out a little thing that I sort of missed because it was somewhat God smuggled, as Kerry Solomon calls it. He had said uh, uh, the point that he had made in a, an article I read earlier today was about Boss Baby, the movie Boss Baby, and how they had actually lifted up Jesus as boss in Boss Baby. And I had noticed that myself because I have young children. And, and so these kinds of things, our awareness of what is working is really important rather than just saying, oh, that thing is not perfectly Christian. Yeah, but the farther we go that direction towards biblical values, the better off all of us are. So that's the strategy is to translate, isn't it, Dr. Bear? Right, that's the strategy and holding up, I don't know whether you see it, our report to the entertainment industry, it's about 80 pages and very small point type. Uh, but in that we do every movie we show how they perform at the box office. Mm. Uh, we show how they make money. But we, we look at them in terms of a 150 criteria. So we look at, uh, you know, Plato was a, was a follower of ontology and Aristotle was epistemology. But we also look at it in terms of biblical views. So there's art and, uh, you know, the creative aspect. So actually, a lot of studio guys ask me for this report and say, uh, because we teach them how to make money at the box office. Now, there are a lot of other lobbying units in Hollywood. There's about uh, 30 uh, GAY groups, and there's about 20 uh, Muslim groups. There are about 1,200 groups. And my, one of my sons is a major in Marine Corps. They have a representative in Hollywood. A friend of mine, Michael Emerson, was a representative of the state. But none of them can show the figures that we can, that if you cohere to more Christian values, the better you do at the box office. <laughs> uh, we do it in terms of movies. We look at 100% of the movies that open in 100 theaters or more. So we have a thorough analysis of what's out there. And we, we can see where they um, fail. So people are always asking us to tune up their scripts, tune up their movies, look at their movies. How can their movies reach a bigger audience? Wow, that is so beautiful. The influence from the inside. I'm thinking of Daniel and all kinds of other things. I, um. I want to make sure that we connect all of you to specifically how to know how the rating system works, how to get a hold of it, how to connect to Movie Guide in general, because I think um, it, this organization is reaching tens of millions. I've seen 55 million plus, depending on where you do your research, massive amounts of people. They're influencing all of Hollywood. If you're one of the people who still isn't using this on a daily basis, and to be honest, I knew about Movie Guy, but I didn't quite understand how relevant it was to me as a dad of little kids. It's extraordinarily relevant, right? It's, it should be my normal go-to. And now my friends have specifically talked about Dr. Bear for quite some time, and I still didn't realize its value proposition and where it directly hit me. So would you help the parents, all of us out there who may have somehow missed that they should be watching and paying attention to what you're doing on a daily basis, how does the rating system work and where do they interact with that? What's the best website place to do it? Well, first place I'll go to the first best website is movieguide.org. Movie but the way we derive the whole rating system, which was also what we used for the report to the entertainment industry, is when I was putting myself through cemetery, I mean seminary. Uh, <laughs> the joke. <laughs> okay. We're with when you. I was putting myself through a, a mainline seminary, David Aikman knows which that was. I was head of the TV department, City University of New York. And we, because I was so concerned, because I come out of the dark side, we got 60 professors together and we did the first media literacy course. After about five years, that course was hijacked uh, by leftists. And uh, we put a biblical base to it. 
And that course helps parents to see what are the stages of development of their children, wow. what can they see, and what shouldn't they see, and how does it influence them depending upon their susceptibilities. Some kids are susceptible to violence, about 10%. Not every kid is susceptible to violence. So many people will say, well, it doesn't hurt me. Well, it probably doesn't. But that if you look at the people who are doing the shootings, it did hurt them. Right. And about 25% are susceptible to drugs. I make a joke that I was a pudgy little teddy bear, so I'd get beat up and I was susceptible to alcohol. Whatever it is, somebody's susceptible to something. 66% of the young girls are susceptible to low self-esteem. And when they see these models and celebrities on TV or in movies, they think they don't measure up. Mm -hmm. And therefore, in Hollywood, you get kids around, girls around nine years old that are trying to get, um, you know, augmentation and all the rest of it in plastic surgery. So we've right. got to get a handle of this. Movie Guide looks at it in terms of all that to help you. We don't say yes or no. We're not trying to sow the seeds of rebellion. We're trying to help people develop discernment so the children grow up discerning. They want to choose the good and reject the bad. For instance, I was on one program in Dallas and a friend of mine was interviewing me and a girl called in and uh, said, you know, I wanted to go see this movie. But then you told me, you know, that an animal was killed in the movie. And, you know, I, I'm thinking about now the movie Joker. If you knew the Joker killed his mother, you know. I think that that's not what most of us want to see. So by exposing that through the content section, through the ratings, now we'll give a movie four stars because it's extremely well made. Joker is extremely well made. Let's forget about that. But they also look at the acceptability and also look at the content and say, yuck, I don't want to see something where the mother is being uh, killed by her son. That is so good, and it's so important. Movieguide.org, and it's so important, too, just the help of understanding how to filter what you're hearing as a parent in relationship to, is gun violence everybody? Is this everybody? And getting a sense of how much of a composition, all those compositional elements are so incredibly important. I see a number of things that I can't wait to do with you, and, and why, uh, for example, Bobby Romas told me so many times that we needed to meet um, and I look forward to figuring out how we can lift and push out more and more of these incredible tools that you have to offer to everybody. Um, and I know we're only a drop in the bucket compared to what you're already doing, but we want to add as many drops as we can <laughs> to making sure this Good. gets we'll, wider, bigger, And we're stronger. here to help you too. Uh, you know, it is all truly for the kingdom and truly about the uniting the body of Christ. So thank you so much for being here with us today. We deeply appreciate your time and your expertise and the value of what you're bringing. This is our harvest issue right now. We're in the middle of our harvest issue and you'll see all kinds of the things, including both of your parents' pictures in the feature we just did on you <laughs> of this issue coming up right here in November. So uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you for your time. And thank you for being a part of the body. Have a great, great day. God bless. And God, God bless to everybody out there. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And for each of you that bring the full gospel of Jesus Christ into the world, Godspeed. <laughs>